stretch it out for a second. So, uh, <laughs> we are back in the intro of Code Fights doing common character count. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to return a count of how many letters they have in common and how many times. For instance, there are two A's in here and three A's in here, so we only count two of them. The way that I did this was I created an object for the two strings that get passed in because we get an S1 and S2. I split that into an array and then in those objects I append to it and then I keep track of how many A's are in one, how many B's, etc. are in each object and then I compare and I take the lesser of those and I return, I add that to the count because we wouldn't take the greater because it doesn't have them both in common. So first we gotta find out how what letters are in it. Second, we have to find out how many of those letters is it, are in it. And the third and final part, we gotta find out what is the smaller part, because that's what they have in common. So let's go ahead and get started by, and I'm gonna put some comments in here, uh, just so that it, it all makes sense, because it is a little bit of c code. Uh, we repeat two for loops. We could probably have written a function for that. And, uh, I'm sure you guys can come up with a better way of solving this, but this is how I did it. So sp split up the strings into arrays. All right, so we're just gonna use, oops. Say S1 is equal to S1 dot split. And these are, this is going to be a character array. Same thing with the uh, S2. So we have our two arrays now of characters. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create an object. I call it S1 object and uh, S2 object. And these are gonna start off by being empty. Now, what we're gonna do is create a for loop that iterates through the first S1 array here and is going to check if our S1 object has a property that's going to be equal to the character that we're, we're checking. And if it's false, we're going to go ahead and add that property and add one as its value, add that key, and if add one as the value. If it's true, meaning that it does exist, we're gonna go ahead and add one to its value. So we need a for loop. Standard for loop, var i is equal to zero. Well, I is less than S1 dot length, I plus plus. And here we're gonna say uh, an if statement that says, hey, does S1 object dot has own property? Does the item that we're checking, the current index that we're checking, does it exist? Is it, is it not, does it not exist rather? If it doesn't exist, we want to go ahead with bracket notation, add that value. And we want to go ahead and set it equal to one. So the first iteration of this, A doesn't exist in our object, so we want to add it to our object. And uh, if we want to right now, just kind of showcase the, the objective here, let's go ahead and run our tests. And we can, we, we can see that right now, all we're doing is adding the letters. So there's an A, a B, and a C in there, and they're all value of one. But the, there's two A's, one B, and two C's. So what do we do for that? Well, if it's false, that means it exists. So we can just make this an else statement. And in here, we can say S1 object on this property here. Let's go ahead and just add one to it. We can run our code one time to see that it's working. And now we have two A's, two C's, and one B as we should. That's the first part. Now everything we did right there in this, this is why I said that we could probably write a function because we are quite literally going to be copying what we do here. But since I didn't do that, I'm just gonna copy it. And all we're gonna do here is change the S1s to an S2. So S2 object, S1 object. Go ahead and swap that out. It's gonna do the exact same thing. 
And while we're at it, we can check to make sure everything is working. So we'll run our string and we'll see that we have an S2 object here. We have, oh. That's two objects. Oh, here we go. I was like, there's a mistake somewhere. <laughs> so uh, now we should be good. So you'll see we have three A's, one D and a C. Everything is working great. Now the last little part that we need to do is we need to iterate through one of our objects and compare it with the other object to see one, does it have it in common? And then we have to see which one has less than the other of the item that they have in common and keep track of that. So because we need to keep track of that, let's go ahead and create this total variable here. We'll initialize it to zero. Now we're going to do a for loop that's for, uh, that's a, uh, that's going to iterate through an object. So we'll say prop, short for property, in our object. You can iterate through the first one or the second one, it doesn't really matter. Next what we're going to do is say, look, does this object, does the S2 object, the opposite object of what we're iterating through, contain this prop? So does the A, is A in A in S1 in have an A property in S2? So is the this oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Excuse me there. Does that property exist? Is it equal to true? Now Go ahead and get some spaces up here. Now, if it is, what we have to do from here is have an if else statement that says, hey, which one is less than or greater than? So if, because we have to, we want to add the less than, if this prop, because now we're checking the value, is less than, is S2 object is less than the S1 object prop, because now we know it exists, go ahead and take our total go ahead and add that S2 object because it's the smaller value. Now, if that's not the case, we'll do an else statement. And right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the S1 object prop, uh, prop value because that is the smaller value, meaning they all have it in common. Now, all we have to do here, clean up our code a little bit and return total. And that should be it, assuming no syntax mistakes or anything else. And submit it. And we are good to go. So this is how I solved it. We uh, used the has own property quite a few times. We used objects a little bit more than I was expecting to when I first saw this. But this was what, what, uh, how, I, how I ended up solving it. But uh, as always, guys, I'm always interested in your solutions for myself as well as the other subscribers and people who watch the channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and support me on patreon.com slash codingtutorial360. Join our Facebook group, Codetech and Caffeine. The links are all in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsors, Dev Mountain. If you're looking for a coding boot camp where tuition and housing is included, definitely check them out. Appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.